Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Uh, pardon, uh, pardon me recording in uh, uh, KGV mode. So the the Steven Anderson video, how was it made? Well, you know, uh, a couple of you guys, uh, a couple of you guys made a made a request for me, you know, to do a video on him, so uh, I only knew a couple of things about him before I started make, making the movie and um, I knew about him like you know some protestant pastor who had scathing comments regarding Eastern Orthodoxy and that was literally it, I didn't know anything else so uh, I, did start, I decided to watch a couple of videos uh, by him uh, first I started uh, watching his video, I think it was called something along the lines of Eastern Orthodox in the Light of the Bible and uh, but it was an hour long and uh, because I don't appreciate his preaching style I simply called it quits then, uh, then I uh, clicked some other video which was considerably shorter but man did it give me a, you know, a bad vibe and finally, um, I found a video on Eastern Orthodoxy that was relatively short, the Mount Athos exposed, and I laughed and laughed. Guys, my face was red how much I, I laughed, because, oh man, you know, it's not like I wish Inquisition is back, but I can appreciate the sentiment that led to Inquisition, because that was one big huge pile of absolute nonsense, you know? And uh, and um, I wanted to make a video, but my, you know, community said, oh boy, don't do it, uh, he doesn't need more exposure, he's just a vitrolic man, and I was like, okay, fine. And then suddenly, I remembered that uh, uh, Jenna Marbles video, which I watched a while back and then again I started to laugh, to laugh, to laugh and uh, I I really wanted to share that uh, that joke uh, so uh, I um, I started writing a script for the for the Bible Illustrated Cans episode it wasn't meant to be pencils and prayer ropes and then suddenly I was like okay, there's too much material here I will make a uh, uh, I will make uh, an actual Bible Illustrated uh, video out of it, and I did. Oh boy, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of things to unpack, and uh, you know, um, my my opinions of Steven Anderson are uh, he has a lot of zeal. And he is a very fervent Trinitarian, so, you know, credit where credit is due. And that's great. Uh, but, oh man. This is why we didn't need Calvinism, you know? Because uh, I, I, uh, I noticed that he has a lot of sermons on Calvinism. But man... Uh, his entire theology is true and true Calvinistic, you know. I think he has a lot of hate for sinners, like like absolute hate. Um, I believe that if Christ, uh, I believe that uh, if they brought a woman caught in adultery before him, he would he would cast the first stone, and if Christ screamed. He who has no sin, let him cast the first stone. I think that uh, uh, he would throw a second stone at the woman and possibly even at Christ, because he's a reprobate. reprobate. Uh, by the way, I noticed on uh, this live stream because we had a visit from uh, one of his fans, and I have no idea. I mean, I know why it is, but it, it's so strange. They love the word wicked. I, I don't know why. I only associate that word with like uh, the witch of the uh, witch of the west from uh, uh, from um, uh, from Wizard of Oz, 
and I would, I don't know, I think I would probably say that to a very naughty eight-year-old girl, but, yeah, it's strange. So, uh, what else uh, do I need to say about this whole thing? Uh, of course, there were some comments from, well, if not his, maybe not his uh, congregation, members of congregation, but definitely his online fans. And boy, guys, if you thought that he was un, uh, unfair to uh, towards uh, uh, towards Eastern Orthodoxy. You should have seen how he uh, he treats a Christian who struggles with extreme problems. Uh, someone posted a Google talk of him, uh, uh, of them, uh, that is of Stephen Anderson and uh, his uh, flock, uh, basically gossiping about uh, the vigilant Christian, who is also a Protestant. Uh, uh, a Christian vlogger, but he had some, you know, issues, struggles, and everything. Man, they tore him to shreds. Uh, practically, in my whole life, I don't remember seeing such amount of evil, soul-destroying gossip. It was, it was, it was beyond belief. You wouldn't see such gossip. Uh, uh, you wouldn't see such gossip in. Uh, um, like a uh, high school uh, high school sitcom you know it was it was simply beyond belief you know uh i can imagine a pastor getting involved with such gossip but to be so spiritually deluded that you actually post it and think that you're doing the work of god by it oh man no no that was that was bad um there's uh, one mistake I made in the video, uh, which I regret. It's not a big mistake. Um, at one point, uh, Stephen Anderson says that Jesus forbade long robes. Uh, uh, and uh, I mistakenly attributed uh, to, uh, that to Jesus, you know, um, calling out Pharisees for prolonging their tassels. But yeah, uh, he does say uh, at one point that Pharisees like going uh, around in long robes. But Jesus commanded long, long robes, you know, if you, uh, <laughs> if you read the book of Exodus and you see how temple worship was organized, basically entire chapter is, uh, is uh, devoted to the, entire, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the vestments. And of course, uh, Pastor Jones would say, well... That's Old Testament, that's Old Worship, Christ died for us, and that's all fine. However, uh, he apparently can't tell apart um, the legal provisions of uh, Old Testament versus the New. And, um, just one moment, please. Because, you know, he constantly, uh, he constantly, uh, uh, he constantly, you know, uh, calls, uh, you know, for the government to, you know, off, off the gaze, uh, or even worse, for them to off themselves, based on the, uh, the verse that if somebody causes uh, one, of the, one of the young to stumble, that it is better for him to uh, drown himself with a millstone around his neck. Uh, and yeah, he can't tell a part of homosexual from a pedophile. Like, he literally can't. Um, and a lot of uh, people, I mean, a lot, comparably a lot to some other videos of mine, uh, wanted essentially the same thing. Like, you oppose God because uh, you oppose God. Well, ironically, in the first Corinthians, uh, St. Paul tells uh, which are the deeds that can get us damned, and he mentions homosexual acts at one point, and then he continues with, uh, and such were some of you, but you were redeemed with the blood of Christ, or sanctified. 
meaning uh, basically that uh, those people were involved with such things, but they ceased to do them. And they wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, to repent of those deeds if it were along, uh, uh, if it were up to Steven Anderson and his ideal society, which would probably go full fledged, uh, full fledged Handmaid's Tale, you know. Oh man, it was it uh, it, it was horrible, and you know, uh, Steven Anderson has ten children. Uh, the incidence of homosexuality I checked is around five percent. It's possible that maybe one of those kids will be gay. God forbid. I, I don't. I don't wish uh, that on anyone. I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think it is uh, one of those things that are like uh, just on the spectrum of sexuality. I think it is a bit more problematic than that. Uh, I can assure you that uh, if any of his children is to be gay, that child would rather commit a felony. Uh, then uh, actually tell his uh, father that he or she has that issue because you know you would uh, you would at the very least uh, lose roof under over your head uh, or maybe even your life who knows and then that uh, and the, and later on that uh, that child will have a TED talk along the lines of I sur I survived a crazy Christian cult. And then, in the long run, the damage caused by this man is way bigger than any good that he might have done. And he does good. I, I don't... I mean, he does win people over to Christ, but I'm sort of worried uh, to what kind of Christ. Uh, you know, uh, the issue here is, is that uh, the only true God of Stephen Anderson, sadly, is the King James Bible. And it is a faulty translation. Again, uh, it is a faulty translation, but not the worst thing in the world. You can be a pretty good Christian with uh, King James Bible, but uh, you know it's not uh, it's not the best translation there is. It is one of the most beautiful. I'll I'll give it that, but a correct one, no. But you know when you have such a metastasis uh, of sola scriptura. Uh, you are bound to get. Uh, uh, you are bound to get uh, uh, such uh, you know crazy talk like uh, King James only version uh, lunacy. What makes you think that uh, the translation is correct? What is the first translation of every Bible in every language? Absolute truth? No. It's simply not. And especially with modern technologies uh, and translation and everything, uh, translation is an art that has advanced over time, you know. And of course there are faulty translations, I mean among the modern ones. And uh, I'm not saying that uh, all, all criticism against... Uh, uh, I'm not saying that, uh, uh, that uh, all criticism against uh, modern translations is unwarranted. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I actually saw him uh, <laughs> I actually saw him trying uh, to debunk uh, the new international version which I personally don't like uh, to say the least but uh, that uh, that the translation calls both Christ and Satan the morning star it's fine they're called that uh, in different contexts <laughs> oh man but yeah also the Old Testament calls for death of um, you know uh, unruly children uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Stephen Anderson you know does not apply the, pro uh, the proper Old Testament provisions when one of his children misbehaves and if he says that they never misbehave I don't buy it <laughs> bye guys